That's uh, not what I was going for, but uh, I guess that's my intro now. Well, hello there, folks. This is Lyage, and welcome to a video for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. So this video is the one that I've had on the back burner for quite a while now, specifically since the release of the second Sunbreak title update. With quite a bit on the horizon that I'm excited for, I decided I should probably get this video out before becoming too busy with all the new stuff. Now with that said, what is this video going to be about exactly? Well, put simply, I would like to share a bit into how I've been playing the game as of recently. Because a lot of my playtime in Sunbreak lately has consisted of grinding anomaly quests, I'm always trying to mix up my playstyle to keep things interesting. I discuss this concept often in my videos, but I do think one of the best things about the Monster Hunter games is how much you can vary your play in order to make the game feel completely different. So now, I will be showing off one of my favorite builds as of late. In a way, one could say that this video is a successor to my playstyle guide videos that I made back in Base Rise. Essentially, I will be going over the build and showing off a few key techniques that we will be using to play in a certain way. Now then, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So if you hadn't figured out from the video title and all the footage I was running, this playstyle is all about the Sword and Shield. The Sword and Shield is a very versatile weapon that can be played in quite a few ways, and I would like to think that this particular playstyle that I'll be showing off is one of the more unconventional ways to play the weapon. But now, get ready for a twist. This exact playstyle that I'll be showing off is one that I had already covered in an earlier video. The concept for this playstyle is exactly the same as one that I covered in my guide on the Counter Sword and Shield playstyle. But if you're considering leaving this video to go watch that one, I would suggest that you don't for two important reasons. First, at the time that I covered the playstyle, it wasn't really viable. Without some key skills added in Sunbreak, the concepts I covered cannot really be used against most monsters. And second, uh, the video is just really bad. Okay, this might just be personal bias that comes with looking at my old work, but the video was recorded during a time that I was still experimenting with the best way to record a voiceover. And uh, let me just say that my strategy of reading the script very slowly as to not trip over words was not the best. Well, I'm sure in another few years I'd look back at this video and find it hard to watch because that's just how these things are. But anyways, for now, you're in the right place because I will be detailing everything you need to know about this new and improved playstyle that I am now dubbing the Unbreakable Sword and Shield. So let's jump right into the basics for this playstyle. If you haven't played much Sword and Shield, you may need to brush up on the basics with another tutorial, but I will cover the relevant moves for our purposes. Now then, with this playstyle, we will be making heavy use of the shield part of our Sword and Shield. And I don't just mean using the shield as a blunt instrument, we will actually be blocking with it. Let's try that out. Hold down the right trigger and we can pretty easily block any attack that comes our way. Now of course, compared to other blocking weapons, we aren't nearly as sturdy. As you will notice, if we try to block a large attack, we will nearly be knocked off our feet. Even against light attacks, we can't expect to shrug off the blow and seamlessly start attacking again. Still, it's better to have blocked an attack than to have gotten hit by it, so your shield can be a lifesaver in certain situations. But now, what if we could make our shield better? The first thought in this regard would be to add some points of the guard skill to our build, so let's start with that. With guard level 5, we can notice a reduced reaction to light attacks. We will still get knocked back a step, but this isn't too bad. Against a heavy attack, however, we are still pushed back quite a bit, so with all that investment we put into guard power, this feels like a pretty low return. But what if I told you that we had the ability to block attacks with absolutely no knockback? Allow me to introduce a move that the Sword and Shield has had since a base rise. I'm sure many of you are aware of this move, but I don't think that it gets a lot of use in most playstyles. While we are blocking, if we press the right face button, we will perform a guard slash. As we will notice, while this move is performed, our character gains this blue aura. This indicates that the move will function as a counter. So if an attack hits us while we are slashing, we can actually block the attack and instantly follow up with a quick shield bash. 
When guarding normally with guard level 5 against this light attack, we do still take a bit of knockback, but when we counter the attack, we stand firm and even get an attack in the process. But how does this counter fare against heavy attacks? With guard level 5, against this heavy attack, we are still able to counter without losing our footing. This is pretty big because we did take a large knockback from this move when we used a normal block. Alright, so does this mean that we can counter any attack with this move then? Well, not really. Allow me to remove a single point of guard from my set, taking us down to guard level 4. If we now try to counter this heavy attack, we are unable to do so. So, whether or not we can counter an attack is tied to our guard reaction. Take a look at the block animation for this attack with a normal guard, using guard levels 4 and 5. It might not look like a huge difference, but we can see that for the lower guard level, our shield will drag on the ground and it takes us longer to recover from the hit than it does with the max guard level. And so, from what I can tell, it is the difference between these two guard reactions that determines whether or not a counter is possible. Basically, if an attack would hit us hard enough to make the shield drag on the ground, then the counter would have not been possible. But if the guard reaction is any bit lower, then we can counter and eliminate all knockback. Okay, now in focusing on the guard reaction mechanics of this counter, I have conveniently been ignoring the other main feature of it, so I suppose it's time to cover it now. So of course, we had our quick shield bash that automatically triggers when we successfully counter, but that is just the beginning. Instead of chaining into our normal combos, we now will have the option to go directly into our perfect rush combo. Specifically, we have two choices. With a press of the top face button after the shield bash, we will begin a perfect rush like normal, starting with the first leaping hit. From here, we can continue with the rest of the combo as we see fit, or cancel out of it at any time with a roll. I'm a big fan of the perfect rush for its damage output and KO power, but admittedly it can be a lot to commit to, so don't be afraid to back out after just a few hits if things seem dangerous. Now that covers the first option, but what about the second one? Well, as it turns out, our second option is also the perfect rush. If we instead press the right face button after our shield bash, we will go into the perfect rush, but this time we will start with the second hit. This is pretty handy because that first jumping hit does take quite a bit longer to get us into the combo, and it might also move us out of position. If I'm close to the monster, I prefer to use this version of the combo for these reasons, but on the other hand, if I counter an attack at mid-range, I will often opt for the full combo because the leaping hit can allow me to close the distance and land my attacks. By the way, I suppose there is a third option for us with regards to our countering options that would be simply evading. If we just want to quickly use the counter to absorb an attack, we can simply dodge after the shield bash so we don't have to be swinging our perfect rush at the air. So that should wrap up everything we need to know about how the guard slash counter works. Perhaps this is all stuff that you were aware of, but remember, all of this is only possible when dealing with attacks that won't knock us back too far. So when you're a sword and shield user with no guard boosting, you won't be getting too much use out of this. Alright, so from what I've shown against the training dummy, it seems reasonable that we will want to run guard level 5 if we want to make full use of our guard slash counter. That is in fact what I assumed back when I made my original guide on this particular playstyle. But then I actually tried it in a hunt. I immediately realized that even with guard level 5, there was a lot that I couldn't counter. In fact, during my demo hunt against a Rathian, I found that there was nothing that I could counter with guard level 5 that I couldn't counter without it. Specifically, I couldn't counter two of the most signature moves of Rathian, the fireball and the backflip. And honestly, if I was struggling to counter the likes of Rathian, that didn't bode well for the viability of this build. But if I didn't think it would be viable today, then I wouldn't be making this video. Let me confirm now that these same moves from Rathian can't be countered. Okay, yeah, so I do have guard level 5 and I can see that this still isn't working. Well, let me try one more thing.
Yep, that's right, as it turns out, there's now a whole lot that I can counter. And this is all thanks to the new Embolden skill that we got in the second Sunbreak title update. To give a quick overview of this skill, we will gain a few effects when a monster is targeting us. This is a combination of defense, evade window, and guard power. In exchange, the monster will become enraged faster, but this isn't all that bad as we can become stronger with something like Agitator, and some monsters by default just take more damage when enraged. On its own, I don't think this is any stronger than guard level 5, but the important thing here is that it does stack with the guard skill. So put simply, if we have guard level 5 and embolden level 3, we will have a low enough guard reaction versus most attacks to get a counter off. This does of course come with the caveat that we must have the monster's attention to have our full counter power. Now if you're playing solo, this is no problem, but when hunting with other players, it might not be quite as effective. However, at least from some sessions that I've had hunting with one other person, I still find that the skill is active most of the time when I need it. Because if we think about it, we will usually be targeted by the monster before it sends a heavy attack our way. In theory, there is also the diversion skill that we can slot in to increase the amount of attention the monster will give us. I've never noticed much of a difference with this one, but hey, it's a small slot, so toss it in if you feel like it. Okay, so real quick, let me summarize the skills that I would like to have for this type of playstyle. Of course, we now have our two enabling skills, Guard and Embolden, to ensure that we can land as many counters as possible. In addition, another one that I find fun to use is the Offensive Guard skill, which gives us a cool percentage-based attack boost if we block an attack at the last second. And guess what? We can trigger this with our counter. Okay, whoops, uh, back to the training room because this needs a little extra explaining. So as we've learned, we can perform the guard slash with the right face button input while holding our guard. But if we notice, countering an attack like this will not trigger offensive guard. And this is because the block itself was not at the last second. Don't worry though, we don't need to already be blocking to get the guard slash out. Instead of first blocking and then hitting the slash, if we hit both buttons at the same time, that's right trigger plus the right face button, we can perform the guard slash instantly. You may have already noticed me doing this because this is how we can counter an attack in a way that also counts as a last second guard, which gives us that nice damage boost. Okay, continuing on with our skills, if we're running with Embolden, as I mentioned earlier, Agitator is a pretty good add for us because the monster is more likely to be enraged and that just translates to more damage for us. I'm also just a fan of Agitator when dealing with anomalies, which will either be very mad or very tired. And it also helps that we can get the skill maxed out with our favorite Embolden enabling armor, the Violet Mizutsune set. Now as of the fourth title update, we can make decorations for the Emboldened skill, but I do still love the Violet Mizu set for putting all of these skills in a single package, almost as if there is a little bit of synergy going on here. I might also recommend the Guard Up skill if you really want to go full tank to be able to deal with some of the extra dangerous moves. I do generally skip this one myself in favor of damage skills though. And that about does it for the core skills. The rest of my build is just a mix of elemental damage and affinity. I don't really focus on making meta builds, but I have been finding that this setup can comfortably hold its own against high tier anomalies and even risen elders. Overall, I just really enjoy this build for its survivability, but also just being really fun to play. So to round things out, I want to share a few clips of this playstyle in action. It might take a while to get used to the counter, but hopefully I can give you some ideas with these clips. Okay, we will start with something simple that has some pretty easy to read moves. Obviously, countering a roar is a good way to initiate a fight as it gives us our buff and immediately lets us start swinging hard. So I'm sure you weren't expecting me to go this entire video without any usage of the Shoryu Geki, which is probably the best move the Sword and Shield has. If we look at this bit again, we can notice that the Shoryu Geki actually allows us to cancel out of the Perfect Rush combo to counter an incoming attack. You may have been wondering this whole time why we would even bother using the Guard Slash counter when the Shoryu Geki exists, but of course we know that the Shoryu Geki costs 2 wire bugs while the Guard Slash is free. In that case, I like to lead with the Guard Slash and save the Shoryugeki to get me out of any sticky situations. 
you will definitely see me doing that a lot in these clips. While it wasn't the focus of our build, one extra bonus we get out of the Embolden skill is an increased evade window to go along with our guard boost. This kicks in surprisingly often, allowing me to dodge out of dangerous situations. And the Violet Mizu set was even nice enough to throw in a point of adrenaline rush to give us even more attack if we dodge through things. It's not much, but it's nice to see it trigger every now and then. Alright, now for a slightly more advanced target. When fighting tougher monsters, it might be harder to commit to as many perfect rushes, so we'll have to be a bit quicker on our feet. We have now also found an attack that is unfortunately too heavy for us to counter. Even with Embolden, these do still exist. At least the Shoryugeki will still have no problems with these moves though. On the subject of it being harder to commit to perfect rushes, I do have one handy tip to share. When performing the final hit of the perfect rush, some of you may know that there are actually two different attacks for this. The probably more well-known one is the top face button attack, which sees us climbing the monster before doing a big jumping attack. But with a press of the right face button, our final hit just becomes a very quick spinning reaper, which isn't as strong but is way less of a commitment than the jumping hit. If you use the perfect rush often, you probably already knew this, but since this playstyle will have us doing a lot of perfect rushes, I thought it would be worth mentioning. Okay, now for one more little demo, we will try a bit of a challenge. Well, at least I've heard that this particular quest is supposed to be pretty tough. I do always find this kitty to be a pretty fun fight. Its attacks are pretty telegraphed and easy to counter. However, in this case, this kitty doesn't want to give us that much breathing room, so we will find ourselves often countering and immediately having to back out. There are a few cool things here that we can counter though, such as the multi-tail slam. The first time I encountered this move, I had to block the first two hits before countering the third, but later I was able to counter the first hit, dodge the follow-up, and then do the full counter from the final hit. I will say though, it looks like I'm mostly out of things to talk about, so I think I'll leave some of this footage playing as I wrap this video up. Alright, so it is now time for some closing thoughts. This particular way to play the Sword and Shield has been a ton of fun for me. The guard slash counters are very satisfying to pull off, but even without doing the full perfect rushes, they are a very safe defensive option that allows us to block attacks and stay in the fight. So if you were like me and have been grinding away at the Sunbreak endgame and want to mix things up, consider trying out a new playstyle like this one. By the way, here's a fun little bonus for you. If you put together this build that I have used in this video, you could also have yourself a very fun charge blade setup. 
While not necessarily a full guide for a playstyle, if you check out my video on the Charge Blades Ready Stance skill, I do detail a build that uses this exact same set that also focuses a lot on blocking and countering. Anyways, rounding out the video, if you've made it this far, as always, thank you very much for watching. Going forward, I don't have any immediate plans for more Sunbreak videos, but that might change with later title updates. The main reason for this is right on the horizon for me as I record this video, that would be Wild Hearts. That's right, I'm currently racing to get this video out because probably once it's uploaded, I will be playing that. In fact, you may even notice some streams of me playing Wild Hearts right here on this channel because I have decided to try out some YouTube streaming to see if people are interested in it. So yeah, I will likely be spending a good amount of time playing through Wild Hearts, and depending on how I feel, I may start producing some videos on it. So that will likely account for the near future on this channel, I do hope there will be some good fun to be had there. And since I want to start playing as soon as possible, let's really end this video. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.